good morning right okay then uh, we are going to start the lecture uh, can you see the <clears throat> can you see the lot yes sir right can see. today you know absenteeism and presenteeism absenteeism and uh, presenteeism are very interesting uh, two topics Uh, let me finish uh, absenteeism first, then I will come to uh, presenteeism. So you can see here the uh, chapter objectives. So there are seven objectives. So then four objectives are related to absenteeism. And uh, objectives uh, numbered five, six and seven are related to presenteeism. So hopefully, you know, after listening to me, this lecture, and then after studying this not uh, successfully, you will be able to achieve these seven objectives. So they are the learning outcomes that we expect, that I expect uh, from this session. Okay, then we have the absenteeism. <clears throat> right. Okay, have a, <clears throat> right. The meaning of absenteeism, the meaning of absenteeism. So when an employee becomes stayed away from the work, absent of this. Okay, so then, uh, so that everyone can understand when the, the meaning of absenteeism. So it's not a big thing, but you know, scholarly, there is a difference between absenteeism and absent. At that difference, you are supposed to learn. Absent occurs when an employee becomes absent, you know, to the work, to the organization, normally to the work. Then when an employee who is supposed to come to work, fails to come to work, what is called absenteeism occurs. So then absenteeism is said to be there when an employee who has been rostered, who has been scheduled by the management for work. Uh, that person, if that person doesn't appear, then absenteeism occurs. So therefore, I assume you are an employee, then you know, you, you, you must have been rostered, you must have been scheduled by your superior for work. Then in that case, if you don't appear, uh, that is absenteeism. So that means there is an expectation on the part of the employee. The employer expects the presence of a certain employee, then that certain employee doesn't come, then absenteeism occurs. But I assume in the second situation, the, the, the employer doesn't expect the presence of a certain employee. Or then that employee doesn't you know, come to work, or then absent occurs, but absenteeism doesn't occur. Okay, all right. Uh, okay, then uh, there are some other definitions, you know, relating to the dic no, from 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 the dictionary of personal management by Ivanovic, 1988. Absent is not being at work. Absentee is a person who is absent. The worker who stays away from work for no good reason. And then absenteeism is habit of staying away from work. For no good reason. But here there is an expectation on the part of the employee. So then while the employer is expecting, the relevant employee doesn't come to work, then absenteeism occurs. Okay, then in this context, you know, there are two types of absences: authorized absent and unauthorized absent. So what is an authorized absent? Authorized absent is absent of an employee who has been permitted who has been allowed to be absent by the relevant manager, by the relevant boss, after asking for leave of absent. So as you know, tomorrow, you are going to be absent for your work. Also, you have already obtained, you know, the, the permission. 
for being absent on tomorrow and then you know that is called authorized absent that is an authorized absent but assume you know tomorrow you have not you know for you are going to be absent but you have not obtained the right permission from the right boss right superior and then tomorrow if you are going to be absent or uh, that absent will be counted as an unauthorized absent unauthorized absent okay so right absences you know include all incidents of staying away from work both you know authorized and unauthorized absenteeism includes only absence of employees when management of the organization have rostered or schedules them forward right okay then uh, staying you know staying out because of a strike then is not considered as an absence you know uh, as an absence right then what is the importance of absenteeism generally you know you are an intelligent person you are an advanced student for learning advanced human resource management uh, of course you know i believe you know the importance of absenteeism to a significant extent but let me do it you know in my scholar way indeed absenteeism is a serious hindrance for achieving the expected productivity and then performance the cost of absenteeism are huge some important costs you know if i specify some important cost so you can see so i here i have specified uh, seven yes seven uh, cost specific cost because of absenteeism take first strong the organization will have to incur payments for the maintenance of the absentee these payments will not get reduced maintenance of the absentee you know the the relevant employee doesn't come but the company you know the maintenance cost is there but the employee you know did not come and then did not produce the expected productivity but the maintenance cost is going on so therefore that is a loss to the company to the organization second one the organization will have to continue contributions to retirements of the absentee at their normal rate assume one employee got you know absent for four days you know for the epf edf all are counted you know all these four days also the company will have to contribute so but the employee you know did not come for four days and then did not uh, produce the expected productivity uh, that is also a loss to the organization then the third specific you know cost of absenteeism is the employee will have to contribute uh continue continue contributions or expenses for welfare facility or benefits provided to the absentee at their normal rate assume there are canteen facilities there are toilets and other facilities and then you know so then the company bears you know the the, the cost or the certain amount of uh meal fee and then all you know all these things are occurring you know but the the employee is absent that is also a cost then the organization will have to find out another employee or employees to do the work of the absent if seven employees are absent then seven employees you know will have to be found out to replace the you know those uh, seven people who are who are absent because work is there the employee is not there the work has to be done if there are customers you know who are waiting then the work has to be done then you know the company has to find out the relevant uh, superior has to find out replacement for absentees for this a considerable time also a considerable effort you know will have to be spent in case of non availability of another employee then of course the productivity of the absentee will get lost then number 5 the organization will have to face hmm, difficulties in meeting regular customer needs owing to the absentee 
especially in case of services. Then this will cause to reduce customer satisfaction. So if a delay occurs in executing the custom orders, then customer satisfaction and customer loyalty may get hurt, then, then resulting in you know decision not to buy, not to revisit. Are they are you know serious decisions which are disadvantageous for the organization? Then number six, the organization may have to increase overtime work, resulting in increasing expenses of administration and overtime payments with the premium, usually one and a half, you know, for overtime usually we have to pay one and a half, we have to multiply the normal rate by 1.5. <clears throat> right then the peers, you know, peers will get extra pressure of work owing to the need of doing the daily work of the absent. That's another, you know, peers, you know, co-workers will get uh, problematic because of the, you know, because of the absence. Because they have to perform. Assume, you know, uh, seven employees are supposed to come, two employees were, you know, are absent, and then there are only five employees now at work, then these five employees can be forced by the superior to do the entire work, you know, that has been scheduled to be performed by the seven people. And then, you know, an additional pressure workload goes to, you know, the peers, you know, who are present. They may be unhappy. They may get, you know, you know who not, they may get uh, stress, you know, dissatisfaction. Okay. Then it is possible to occur overtime absenteeism cycle. What is this? This will increase the organizational expenditure. Overtime absenteeism cycle. You know, you know, read this, you know, quotation, you know, from Professor Dalton in 1981. Employees who work a lot of overtime may take time off. When they do so, other employees work overtime in their place and they in turn take time off and so on. Overtime begets absenteeism, which begets overtime. Begets means, you know, creating, creating, generating. So overtime generates absenteeism, which generates overtime. Uh, that is called overtime absenteeism cycle. Right. So in fact, if I'm at the normal teaching session, then I can, you know, I can draw this cycle. But anyway, uh, <clears throat> at, the, at the preparation of this one, you know, I couldn't do it. So I think you can understand, you know. So then the you know overtime begets absenteeism, which begets overtime, then overtime again, you know, begets absenteeism, which begets again overtime. So it goes, you know, like a cycle. That is called overtime absenteeism cycle. This is indeed a cost to the organization. Then is there any benefit of absenteeism? Interesting. An interesting question, you know. Generally, absenteeism is a cost to the organization. But can we perceive absenteeism as a benefit? When employees get exhausted or into continuous working, they can take some time off in terms of absentee, absence. This may reduce their exhaustion and then they can return to work with new energy. Then in that way, you know, absenteeism can be, you know, perceived as a coping behavior. If it is perceived as a coping behavior, then it is, it is a benefit, really. It is a benefit. You know, so then uh, normally we consider absenteeism is a temporary withdrawal. Temporary withdrawal. Uh, so it is, of course, it is, you know, somewhat better than a permanent withdrawal. What is a permanent withdrawal? So like turnover, you know, quitting, quitting. The quitting means here the employee turnover, employee resigns. Uh, that means the employee has no intention of coming back. Employee goes, you know, forever from the organization. Uh, that is a permanent withdrawal. But absenteeism is a temporary withdrawal. 
employees or employee got unhappy or got tired, suffered from serious, you know, amount of uh, stress, and then you know, in order to get a rest, em employee decided to be absent. Then after maybe two days, the employee hopefully becomes normal, and then the employee you know, can come to work you know, with the new energy, with new energy. Uh, that is a benefit of absenteeism. Then thus, you know, is it good to allow absenteeism in order to reduce turnover? Another question. It is not because, you know, it is not good because of the fact that there is functional turnover. There is functional turnover. What is this functional turnover? Right, normally, right, normally, you know, employees, you know, uh, functional turnover means the, <clears throat> what is, uh, in fact, you know, I will deliver a lecture, you know, if the time permits, uh, on management of, uh, management of uh, employee turnover. Employee turnover. You know, there are, okay, there are some resignations which are, you know, beneficial, which are beneficial to the organization. So assume, you know, there are 10 bad performers. They resign, you know, they resign. Of course, it is, it is a good thing to the organization. Assume there are bad, you know, there are bad 10 performers. Or let us take for easiness, you know, there's a bad, there's a very bad employee, bad performer. The, the, the superior is thinking of, you know, uh, how, you know how, how, to, how to get rid of this employee, how to terminate this employee. Are they, you know, how to terminate? At the time of thinking like that, this employee, you know, decides to resign. Uh, that is that is a blessing, you know. That is a blessing. So the employee, the, the manager thinks that that's a blessing to the organization, also to the manager. So it is a really a benefit. Then you know, after resigning, uh, then the um, the manager will be able to you know uh, hire a better, a very good, at least a good employee, you know, for that bad employee who resigned. Uh, that is a benefit to the organization. That is a benefit. Uh, that is called functional turnover, you know. That is called functional turnover. But indeed, you know, I assume there is an employee who is a very good employee, high performer, you know, who is going to resign. Uh, that is dysfunctional turnover, you know. It is going to be dysfunctional turnover. Assume 10 excellent high performers resign in the last week. Uh, then, of course, the company you know, faced dysfunctional turnover, which is indeed a disadvantage, a serious disadvantage to the organization. Okay, so then the, uh, right. Also, you know, I must, uh, you know, you, you should let this one also. Costs of absenteeism, according to research, you know, are enormous. The benefits, if any, are subtle, tenuous, you know, small, you know, negligible, and have not been subjected to empirical verification. You know, according to Professor Dalton, so therefore, you know, if there are benefits, they are subtle. They are not that much. But if any, the cost of absenteeism are huge, enormous. Therefore, conclude like this, you know, Generally, absenteeism is a serious cost to the organization. That's why now we are learning, you know, absenteeism. And then later we have to learn, you know, how to uh, manage absenteeism, how to minimize absenteeism. If possible, how to eradicate absenteeism. Right. It is possible to further, you know, talking about the importance of absenteeism, it is possible to classify the cost of absenteeism into two groups, such as direct cost and indirect cost. Okay, what are the direct costs, you know? Paying salary and benefits for a worker who is not there, direct cost. And the indirect cost, organizing replacement staff, oral reductions in productivity and administrative cost, increasing, you know, Increasing administrative costs. Uh, these are 
indirect cost of absolute diesel. Okay, all right. So then, also another one, absenteeism, you know, is a measure of HR and effectiveness. Of course, uh, you know, the normally, normally, normally it is believed that it is natural that employees get sick owing to many reasons. Uh, this sick, you know, sick absences are inevitable. Assume, assume genuinely you become ill, uh, then of course you have to be absent. You have to be absent. That is inevitable. And then it is natural that employees get sick of into many reasons. So therefore, there will never be zero level absenteeism. If we consider sickness absenteeism or sick absences, and then there will never be zero level absenteeism. You know, so we have thousand employees working for the organization. Then it is natural that 10 people, you know, at least 10 people will get sick. Then there will be 10 absences. However, you know, however, in order to enhance HR and effectiveness, we expect a low level of absenteeism. We want to achieve a low level of absenteeism. When absenteeism gets increased, that is an indication of ineffective HR. So therefore, uh, we, you know, we, we try to minimize absenteeism so that, we, you know, the HR and effectiveness will get increased. So you see further, you know, the, the, the elaborating further the importance of absenteeism, management of absenteeism. Employee absenteeism results in billions of dollars and revenue losses and loss productivity annually. Given the consequences that organization could face resulting from high levels of work absences, the, the top management should develop strategies to manage absenteeism to support organizational growth and sustainability. So what about Sri Lankan situation? In public sector, you know, I know that uh, this is a problem. Yes, serious problem. Of course, Sri Lanka is a developing country that you know badly needs to improve its productivity, so productivity in a higher extent. So then, you know, when we want to, you know, when Sri Lanka wants to improve seriously her productivity, then if Sri Lanka you know has been facing or is facing absenteeism, that is a big problem to Sri Lanka. So therefore, it is important. Uh, to take measures to reduce absenteeism, to minimize absenteeism to the extent which is possible. Okay, then uh, for the purpose of you know sound management of absenteeism, it is a requirement that we have to measure absenteeism. You know, several times I taught you nothing can be successful unless unless it is measured. So therefore, if we want to, you know, get success of something, to improve that success of something further, of course, we have to measure that. The level of achievement of something, you know, we have to measure. Right. So then measuring is indispensable. Basically, three rates, you know, can be calculated for research purpose. Three rates. Absent rates considers all absences, including authorized and unauthorized ones, and it shows the percentage of the total possible working days or available time that has been lost or into absence from all causes. Of course, within a certain period of time, in a certain period of time that we consider, usually one year, maybe one month. You know, from month, you know, month-wise, year-wise, we can calculate. Okay, then uh, the formula. So this is absent rate, you know, this one. Absent rate. And how can we calculate absent rate? Uh, this is the formula. All absences, days lost in the period is divided by total possible working days. 
then multiply it by 100. Then we get absent rate. Without multiplying also, we can get that, you know, as a figure. But anyway, for easiness normally, for comparison purposes, we do multiply by 100. Absent rate. This is an example. If the total of absences, which are authorized and unauthorized in the last year, is 30 days, so you have here 30 days, then total possible working days are 260, you know, 30 divided by 260 and multiplied by 100, then we will get 11.5%. Understood? Let me ask this question. What is this 260 days? What is this 260 days? 260, you know, the total possible days. How did you get that? Per year, there are uh, how many how many days? 365 days. 365 days. Then why, you know, why I have considered here 260? Saturday, remove Saturdays, Sundays, then uh, uh, other general holidays. Okay, then how, how, how many weeks, you know, we have 52 50, weeks 52. per year. And then, you know, if you take uh, Sundays, you know, then 52 you know, days, you know, as Sundays. You know, we have to deduct from 365 days. And then Saturday is normally half day. Half day, you know. Half day, half day, we have to consider, not full day. Then, uh, you know, 40, okay. Uh, how many 52 days? Then half, you know, we have to get the half of 52 days. 26. Yes, 20, yes. So 26, yes, correct. Then, then we have to deduct that also from uh, 365. Then we have four days. Then per month, you know, there is one four day. Then we have 12 months. Then we have to, you know, deduct 12 as per day. Then we have public holidays, you know, public holidays like May Day, Freedom Day, New Year Day, you know, uh, public holidays. And then for how many public holidays per year in Sri Lanka? Eight public holidays. Eight public holidays, you know. Uh, then, you know, you will get this uh, approximately 260. It may be 250, something, but anyway, we can consider 260 total possible working days. All right. Okay, then next one is absenteeism rate. This one is, what is this one? Absent rate. Okay, absent rate. It's not the absenteeism rate. And now we are going to calculate, we are going to learn absenteeism rate. It considers, you know, only absences which are unauthorized. Ah, that's the Earlier one, authorized and unauthorized both. Okay, all right. Authorized and unauthorized both. This one. Don't, don't get confused. Easy to understand, right? So like, this one is only author, unauthorized one. So it shows the percentage of total possible working days or available time that has been lost owing to absence which are unauthorized within the period that we consider. Okay, then you can see here the formula, all unauthorized absences, then divided by total possible working days, multiplied by 100. Okay. This is the example. 20 divided by 260, then multiplied by 100, then 8%. Okay, last year assume 8%. Then this year assume 10%. Assume, yes. Uh, before the last year assume we got uh, 4%. Uh, that means, you know, absenteeism has been increasing. So before it is going to be, you know, <clears throat> a serious one, very serious one, of course, we, then we are supposed to take measures. We are supposed to take actions, remedial actions to, you know, to face this issue, increasing absenteeism or increased 
absenteeism. Right, then uh, sickness rain. That's another another formula, you know. Sickness rain considers only absences due to sickness or sick absences. Only six absences are not, not sick, sorry, sick absences. Uh, you know, the absences, you know, uh, owing to ailments, owing to diseases. Then it shows the percentage of the total possible working days or available time that has been lost owing to sick leave in the given period of time. And how it is calculated, you can see. Okay, right, we will save our time. So you can, now you can say the, you can understand the example. In addition to above rates, you know, uh, above rates, you know, there are some other rates, especially according to the Department for Work and Pensions, United Kingdom. You know, Department for Work and Pensions, United Kingdom. The frequency rate, so one additional, uh, you know, rate, you know, frequency, the number of spells of absence in the period. What is spells here, yeah, yeah, you know, times, you know, times. How many times the person became absent? One time, two times, three times, likewise. Three times, you know, how, you know, first time, second time, third time, so likewise. Mean absent. The number of workers in the period, and then multiplied by 100, you get a frequency rate. So then individual frequency rate is another formula, you know. If you want to wish, you know, if you want to, you know, monitor the number of workers absent during the period, and then we can use individual frequency rate in addition to frequency rate. The number of workers having one or more spells of absence. Then number of workers divided by number of workers and multiplied by 100. Okay, so you, you know, here there is a simple example. In the last month, the organization employed 147 workers at the beginning and employed 150 workers at the end. And during the month, 15 workers had periods of absence, you know, 15 workers, here we have 15, you know, 1, 2, 3, 9, altogether 15 workers. Okay, then during the month, 15 workers had periods of absence, you know, spares, and these 15 workers were away from the work as follows. Now, therefore, you know, the total number of spares of absence, 25. 25. Right, times of stay, you know. Okay, then. The, the frequency rate you can calculate in this way, then individual frequency rate in this way. Okay, right. Now, inter uh, relation. Interrelationships of absenteeism and turnover. Another interesting uh, subtopic or unit of learning. Interrelationships of absenteeism and turnover. Because absenteeism and turnover are big problems in the industry. Of course, they come on the HR, but generally they are business problems, you know. They are business problems. They are, of course, tackled by the functional field of uh, business management that is HRN, that is an HRN. So our absenteeism, sorry, our absenteeism and turnover interrelated? Of course, yes, they are interrelated. Absenteeism is a withdrawal behavior I mentioned earlier. Turnover also is a withdrawal behavior. Hence, it is possible to claim that the two withdrawal behaviors are not independent, but dependent or related. Not independent, but dependent or related. That means absenteeism, you know, relates to turnover. Turnover depends on absenteeism. We can, we can argue like this. Increased absenteeism will result in turnover. Reduced absenteeism 
will result in reducing tendon. So we can argue like that. So that's why you know relatedness, relatedness between these two variables, two issues. Three general models you know have been suggested for the alleged association between withdrawal behavior. You know, three models, thanks to Professor Nicholson. Of course, I didn't find the original source, but I got this from uh, the source, uh, you know, of uh, written by uh, Professor Dalton in 1981. Three models. In the pain avoidance model, adjustment model, and decision model. Pain avoidance model, adjustment model, and decision model. Shall we go to first one? Pain avoidance model. So absenteeism is a precursor of turnover, you know, precursor. Precursor means, you know, it's a determinant. It's a, it's a forerunner, forerunner of turnover. So it happens before turnover occurs. At time one, absenteeism happens. And then at time two, turnover. That, that means after, after happening of absenteeism, then turnover happens. Turnover happens. A positive relationship we can expect between absenteeism and turnover according to this model. If an employee does not like the organization or some salient aspect of it, maybe the superior, maybe salaries, maybe working conditions, other working conditions, maybe career development, and then he or she engages in withdrawal behavior. Being dissatisfied at every opportunity the employee attempts to be absent. The employee who has the pain may begin with temporary withdrawal, that is absentee, culminating at some point, you know, when the time passes, with permanent withdrawal. Now that is turnover. Hence, according to this model, you know, we can theorize that hence, you know, absenteeism leads to turnover. Absenteeism leads to turnover. So because of absenteeism, at a later time, the company will have to face turnover. Okay, all right. So that is called pain avoidance model. And then the second model, showing the relatedness between absenteeism and turnover, adjustment model, rather than being a precursor for an Absenteeism becomes an alternative to turnover. Uh, in that, you know, if if absenteeism becomes an alternative to turnover, of course, it is the uh, it is the it is the it is the message under this adjustment model, right? Then an inverse relationship we can expect between absenteeism and turnover. Here in the first model, the pain model, a positive relationship. But here the adjustment model, an inverse negative relationship, exists between absenteeism and presenteeism. So here if an employee does not like the organization or some salient aspect of it, he or she engages in absenteeism. So as long as the dissatisfied employee is able to be occasionally or regularly absent, the job is bearable. And he or she does not leave, you know, does not resign, does not quit. He or she uses absenteeism as a coping mechanism. Hence, absenteeism does not lead to turnover, but it helps to reduce it. You see, you see reduce it. But here, the, according to this model, absenteeism leads to turnover. But according to this model, absenteeism does not lead to turnover. Instead, absenteeism, absenteeism helps to reduce turnover. Interesting. Adjustment model. Because, you know, when the employee gets tired and when the employee doesn't like certain, certain things, so, you know, in order to cope with that, the employee becomes absent and then forgets about bad things that are happening in the organization. And then, you know, then, you know, the, you know without resigning, the employee comes again. Right, then the decision model, uh, this is the third one, 
of course this one uh, is the uh, I mean, the, the most uh, what I guess or how can I say here? I think as far as these three models are con concerned, the most important model is this one. You know that will explain really the behavior of people. You know, I mean, behavior of the absenteeism. Both you know absenteeism and turnover are rational responses determined by subjective evaluations of individuals. So according to this model, absenteeism and turnover do not have to be a function of trying to avoid dissatisfying jobs, that is pain avoidance, nor does absenteeism have to be coping mechanism, that is adjustment model. They are the result of a rational decision making process that has evaluated the benefits and cost of engaging in these withdrawal behaviors. Now, so then if you want to be absent, then you will consider, you have to consider cost of being absent and then benefits of being absent. If cost of being absent exceed the benefits of being absent, then you decide not to be absent. The same thing, you know, goes to, you know, of, uh, turnover also. The same explanation can be given. You know, before, 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 so you are the employee, before you decide to resign from the organization, you know, you rationally evaluate cost of resigning and then benefits of resigning. If cost of resigning exceed the benefits of resigning, then you decide not to resign, but to remain within the organization. Now that's, you know, this theory. So if in the balance, a positive consequence is expected, the employee will be absent himself or herself from the organization temporarily or permanently. Temporarily means absenteeism. Permanently means uh, turnover. Okay, so look at this, you know, uh, three models. Go to figure 10 one that gives, you know, these three models. Pain avoidance model, avoidance model, absenteeism is a precursor of turnover. Adjustment model, absenteeism is a coping mechanism instead of turnover. Then here, the decision model, absenteeism and turnover are results of subjective evaluations of benefits and costs. So this is the most applicable model, okay, to explain behavior of uh, decision, I mean, behavior of absenteeism, behavior of turnover. But anyway, these three models, interesting. Are you all right? Some part, yep. any questions? Yes, sir. No, sir. Right. Now, courses of absence. I must say, you know, I must thanks to, you know, these two professors. Uh, hopefully my pronouncing is correct. Uh, wrote this. And it's in 1990. Thanks to Professor Poynton and Ital, I got this model. I learned this model from the book written by Professor Torrington and Ital, you know, others, some four, all, all together, four people, four professors. They are UK professors. Right. The model presented by okay. So this model, you know, is very useful one. Very useful one. Perhaps you know the most comprehensive model, also clear model. You know, that 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 you know explains how you know the uh, how how can we manage you know uh, how I mean how the attendance occurs. How can we then the useful ideas, you know, we can get from the model in order to manage employee attendance. So according to the model, you can see the model here. You can see the model here. We got 10.2. Several variables are in the model. So in fact, there are eight variables. The primary variable 
you know, is here employee attendance. Because we want to improve employee attendance by reducing absenteeism. By reducing absenteeism. So therefore, that's why this is the primary variable. This is the dependent variable that we want to enhance, in which we are primarily interested. Management of employee attendance. In other words, management of employee absenteeism employee attendance. So then you can see there are many factors, you know, which affect employee attendance. In the, there are several factors. They can be considered as independent or moderating or intervening variables, you know. So they are the factors, you know, that determine employee attendance. For example, attendance motivation, then ability to attend, then pressures to attend. So like, you know, these things affect employee attendance. Okay, then let us learn the theory. Important points, right. Okay, then attendance motivation is influenced by two other variables. You can see here the, the primary variable of interest is employee attendance. So that is influenced by attendance motivation. Attendance motivation. What is the meaning of attendance motivation? That's the degree to which the employee uh, is enthusiastic you know, to attend the work. To attend the work. Okay, so then that, that attendance motivation is influenced by two other variables. They may be labeled as independent variables of attendance motivation such as pressures to attend and then satisfaction with the job you know so the pressures to when you know when pressures to attend are at high level then of course attendant motivation you know should be high should be high also when satisfaction with the job is high then attendant motivation should be high you know, the, uh, let me, let me, okay, in other words, higher level of pressures to attend will increase attendant motivation. Higher level of satisfaction with the job will increase attendance motivation. Okay? Also, I, you know, the vice versa, you know, then low level of pressures to attend will reduce the attendance motivation. Low level of satisfaction with the job. In other words, you know, dissatisfaction with the job will reduce attendance motivation. Okay, right. Then pressures to attend may result from the following factors. You know, market conditions, threat of redundancy, easiness in finding another job. So like, you know, these market conditions. So when, you know, uh, there's, you know, there's a threat of redundancy. Also, uh, there is no easiness in finding another job from another organization. Then market conditions are tough. Uh, that means resulting in, you know, increased pressure to attend. Then incentive reward system. Attendant bonus, other financial and non-financial incentive, linking absence with reward. Normally, organizations, you know, they give attendant bonus, other financial and non-financial incentive to manage absenteeism, you know, to, to, to minimize absenteeism, to minimize the absence while maximizing attendance. And then, you know, when there are many incentive or reward systems or considerable serious reward systems, then the pressure to attend will get increased. Then work group norms, what is allowed and not allowed to a group member, and the effects of absence on other group members. How do they support, you know? Assume you are a member of a team, then you are going to be absent, you know, uh, you, are, you are absent today. And then if, you know, how, how do other members bear that? You are absent, you know? Will they be cooperative to you? Ah, okay, then they will think that, you got a problem and then you are a friend to them and then, you know, are they going to do your work also? 
our your work call or instead you know they demand you to come forget about your sickness forget about your personal problem don't don't be absent today like if people you know uh, of the team you know work like that then the pressure to attend it of course is high then personal work ethics you know the pressure that comes from within the employer to attend or even to believe of what is right if you think that today being attendant is not good so i assume in the last month because of the corona we got several holidays and then today you know is a working day then you feel you know guilty because of your own ethics then right then the pressure to attend gets increased an organizational commitment that will also increase if this is higher then the pressure to attend also becomes higher right when these factors come to existence affecting attendance motivation employee attendance gets affected right okay then the relationship between satisfaction with job and job situation is moderated by values and job expectations another learning point from the theory the relationship between satisfaction with job and job situation is moderated by values and job expectations if there is a mix mismatch you know between employee values and job values and uh, then that will increase job satisfaction no that will not increase that will increase job dissatisfaction then of course uh, you know having a negative impact on attendance so you can see okay let us go to for this one uh, right here you can see okay here the we we, we got here job satisfaction here job situation then here we have the satisfaction with job job situation and satisfaction with job then employee values and job expectations you know this variable take this as one variable this you know place as a moderator on the relationship between this one and this one you know job situation assume you know opportunity okay opportunity for advancement is high as you in your organization then as far as this matter is concerned your satisfaction with the job is high your satisfaction with job is high so that means you know okay uh, because there is high opportunity for advancement your satisfaction should be high with the job but it doesn't happen because you know mismatch of this so assume your values and your values are not compatible with job values job values assume one of your values is honesty but honesty is not valued you know when you you know at your job you have to tell lies you are engaged in puffing you are engaged in bluffing so like you know telling you know unnecessary things you know telling you know i mean <clears throat> exaggerating things features of the product so we are supposed to you know uh work like that uh, then there's a mismatch between your personal value and the job value so even though even though opportunity for advancement is high your satisfaction with the job is not going to be high because of the mismatch uh, in that way you will understand the meaning of moderate is that because of the moderator the relationship between this one and this one gets cancelled or gets reduced gets changed so in that way we can understand you know okay let us take another one ah uh, here right we have here the employee attendance that is what we want to improve primarily then in order to improve employee attendance according to this theory we have to improve attendance motivation attendance motivation right so assume you know assume economic market market conditions are tough increasing attendance motivation the incentive reward systems are there within the organization 
to encourage youth to you know to come to her and then attendance motivation is high okay let us take this one okay right incentive reward system so incentive you know there is a there is a there is a there is an incentive system that gives you know a high incentive uh, that will motivate you to attend uh, that means your attendance motivation is high and uh, then according to this if your attendance motivation is high then your attendance should be high your attendance should, that is the theorizing attendance high attendance motivation will lead to high employee attendance but it doesn't happen why uh, because of this you have no ability to attend and then ability to attend you know place as a moderator on the relationship between this one and this one in a, you know in in research methodology this is considered dependent variable this is considered independent variable independent variable is the variable that affects the dependent variable when independent variable gets changed the dependent variable should also get changed when attendant motivation becomes higher employee attendance should become high if it doesn't happen that means if that theorized relationship doesn't occur then of course there must be at least one moderator that you know that 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 uh, that is canceling you know that is canceling the relationship the positive relationship between this one and this one so here the ability to attend for example as your incentive there is a there is a high incentive so like as your double pay you know your pay is 100 daily pay is 100 but if you go to uh, work today the because of the incentive i mean there is an incentive paying double that means 200 another 200 you know rupees will be paid to you then you are your, your daily you know uh, remuneration will be 300 and then you want to attend but anyway you got ill uh, you got ill then you can you couldn't attend or family responsibility as you know mother got ill or your spouse got ill then you have to attend to that matter and uh, then even though you because of high incentive you had high attendance to motivation you wanted to uh, you know attend but because of family responsibility you couldn't do that okay so likewise please understand time is going also you know personal characteristics another variable which will influence both you know employee values and job expectation and also ability to attend for example your age you know assume you are you know you are very young you are very young then you are not married uh, then of course you have no family responsibility assume at the moment you are not engaging in any education uh, then yes then ability to attend becomes high okay right so therefore remember you know attendance motivation high attendance motivation will increase uh employee attendance provided that ability to attend is there or satisfied or met okay already all right all right any questions yes sir i have one question regarding that sir all right okay yes uh, attendance motivation is the independent variable as you said sir so dependent variable is employee attendance right so, uh, uh, what are the uh, pressures to attend and ability to attend are the uh, moderate variables or mediate, mediate variables all right mediating okay <clears throat> okay mediating right uh if a variable is a mediator you know that will help the relationship between the independent variable and the dependent variable that is going to be a function you know the the mediator occurs at time 2 independent variable occurs at time 1 the dependent variable occurs at time 
Okay, let me uh, get the examples from this model. Satisfaction with the job. So if you consider these three, okay, if you uh, assume now, this is reality. In the model, you know, there are many variables now. There are eight variables, uh, that is the reality. But forget about, now we are going to demark it. We are going to, you know, deconstruct our model. So then the model has only three variables, only these three. Then, you know, focus only on these three. And then this one is the dependent variable because, because it is shaped by this one, satisfaction with job. So therefore, this is independent variable. Because of the behavior of this variable, the behavior of this variable, you know, going to be dependent. Or because of the behavior of this variable, the behavior of this variable gets changed. Understood? That's why this yes, is sir. independent, this is dependent. Right. Then this variable works as a mediator. As a mediator. You know, okay. Assume satisfaction with the job is high. If satisfaction with the job is high, then we can expect, we can predict that employee attendance should be high. Then if I ask this question, how does it happen? You know, how does it happen? Okay, uh, how, why, okay, in other words, right, why does increase satisfaction with job will, sorry, why does increase satisfaction with job increase employee attendance? The reason is attendance motivation. Therefore, attendant motivation is the mediator. So, therefore, sati increased satisfaction with job will increase employee at attendance through through increased attendance motivation. Understood? Yes, sir. Uh, that is mediator. But here, this one is not a mediator. It is a moderator. It is um, it is a moderator. You know. So the moderator, moder when, when, when the moderator present, I mean, when a moderator yes, becomes present, uh, then the theorized relationship, this one and this one, doesn't occur or gets reduced. Now, 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 right. Now forget about this one. This is the independent, uh, independent variable. This is the dependent variable. Okay, right. Then, if attendant motivation is high, then we can predict employee attendance should be high, will be high. So, assume you had high attend, uh, you know, high attendance motivation, but anyway, you could not attend. <coughs> Sorry. You could not attend to work. Why? Because of the moderator. Because you didn't have the ability to attend. Because of these things. Illness and accidents maybe. Or then maybe family responsibility. Maybe transportation problems. So I assume, you know, okay, how, during, during corona, corona time, you know, how many days, you know, there were employees, you know, who had high level of motivation to attend. Because of personal work ethics, Maybe because of work group norms, you know, some people, because they, they, they understood that some people come to work, uh, irrespective of the corona. And maybe, okay, so then, you know, attendant motivation was high relating to some employee. But anyway, they couldn't attend actually because they didn't have the ability to attend owing to lack of transportation. If they had, you know, uh, if they had transportation, then they had the ability to, you know, attend. Then they could have attended to work because they had high level of attendance motivation. Understood? Yes, yes please, sir. It's, it's still not clear, then you can ask again. Yes. No problem. No, sir. no, sir. It is very clear. Right. Okay. Very interesting. You know this this theory. <clears throat> right. Okay. Then. Uh, 
Right. Then, uh, what about Sri Lankan studies? You know, one study thanks to the Dr. Abe Vikram, you know, Doriti Abe Vikram. In fact, she is you know, she, she, not he. I don't know whether she is living now. Uh, many years ago, in 1991, when she was working as the head of HR in uh, Sri Lanka Tobacco Company, yes, yes. She published, you know, a small book, small book, then uh, which I read. Then from that book, you know, I got these things, right. So then uh, uh, 15 establishments in Sri Lanka, you know, both private and public sectors, you know, she studied. And then nine variables relating to absenteeism were studied and they were work incentives, in the existence of a reprimand system, laxity in the granting of ex post facto leave. What is this? Ex post facto leave. Assume, assume uh, you are an employee and then uh, you are going to be absent tomorrow. You are going to be absent tomorrow. But now to date, by, by, by now, you have not obtained the permission, the right permission from your superior. But you are going to be absent tomorrow, you know, because you know that after, you know, going to work on tomorrow, you will be able to get permission from the boss. From the boss. After taking the absence, you are going to get the permission for that. And that's the meaning of ex post facto leave. Ex post facto means, you know, after the fact, after the event, you know, occurred. But if there is no such a thing, so that means you can't, you know, you can't be absent on the assumption that you will be able to get permission after getting the absence. After getting the absence. So if it is compulsory, you know, to get the permission from the boss, before getting the absence, then there's no such a thing. Understood? But in Sri Lanka, according to this researcher, she observed that many companies, you know, had that laxity, you know, in granting ex post facto leave. So it was a practice that, you know, for majority of employees, you know, they become, you know, they become absent without inform, without getting the permission. In the new way, the later you know after coming back, you know after coming back to work, then they they could you know get the permission from the boss by by filling that what whatever that form or you know, right. Then prevalent of a system of counselling, education, skill level, number of unmarried children, wage level, indebtedness. Okay, then according to her research. You can read, you know, I think by reading you can understand uh, because of saving time, because of the need of saving time, you know, I will briefly discuss all these nine factors, of course, were found to be, you know, determinants of absenteeism in Sri Lanka. For example, you know, okay, you go to this figure, figure is here. Right. Nine factors of absenteeism, you know. So work incentives, reprimand system, system of counseling, laxity in grant, you know, with the same color. That means, you know, one category, job-related category. Then these three, you know, same color education, skill level, number of unmarried children, you know, they were categorized by this research as uh, personal factors or cultural factors. Then these two, you know, the researcher categorized as economic factors, wage level, and indirectness. Okay, so take this one. Number of unmarried children, you know. Number of unmarried children. So when uh, number of unmarried children, you know, this number gets increased, then the absenteeism tends to increase. Because of responsibilities towards unmarried children. Then reprimand system. If there is a punishment system for absences, uh, then, of course, absenteeism tends to reduce. 
also system of counseling there is you know this will reduce absenteeism then the wage level assume this is very high and then this will reduce absenteeism but wage level is very low and then this will increase absenteeism assume you know uh, you know the needed daily wage for an employee is assume 100 but the company is paying 70 and then wage level is low but if there is a chance you know for the employee to find an odd job tentative job that pays you know 120 and then definitely i mean most likely most likely that employee definitely if the employee is money hungry then of course their employee becomes absent because the relevant company pays 7 that odd job pays 120 then the 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 employee becomes absent for the this organization and then takes that odd job and then earns that you know takes that odd job and earns that 120 all right Okay. Then uh, <clears throat> another study, you know, another study, the conclusion, you know, sickness absence is affected by many factors other than working conditions. Nevertheless, improving team spirit and reactivity and preventing poor working posture are important in decreasing sickness absence, you know. Poor working postures, you know. Even now, indeed, you know, I am teaching you now through this Zoom. In a way, you know, this is a poor working posture. Well, you know, if I sit like this, you know, for many hours, it, it is not good for me. Also, it is not good for you also. So normally, you know, the relevant experts, you know, uh, the, the relevant experts, you know, the, the, the medical doctors, they suggest that you should be with the computer maximum 35 minutes continuously, 45 minutes. Some experts maximum one hour. Then you have to get off. You know, from the, you, know, the, the, you have to stop dealing with the computer after 40 minutes, 35 minutes. It is not good for your eyes and you know, but anyway, what to do? This is the impact of Corona on the life of you also life of me. Anyway, you know, let us let us uh, let us uh, see the let us take the positive sides of this one. Anyway, we are teaching. You are learning. We have not stopped. Also, maybe if you can get the uh, video, then that is better than a normal lecture because for a normal lecture there is no video. Then you have a reference to learn. Right. Okay, then. All right. Let us go to now strategies for managing attendance. Strategies for managing attendance. Right. One is, uh, you know, progressive disciplinary system. Progressive disciplinary system. I think you can remember I taught this when I was teaching a uh, general HR under the topic management employee management of employee discipline. So in a progressive disciplinary system, you know, at once you know we don't we do not give a very serious punishment to the employee who becomes absent. So normally the first time you know first time of violation we can give verbal warning. Second time of violation, we can give a written warning, which is severe than a verbal warning to a certain extent. Then for the third time of violation, a one day suspension. Then fourth, one week suspension. At the fifth time, stoppage of pay increment. Then at the sixth time, uh, demotion. Then at the seventh time, the last chance. So normally the last chance is this. Okay, seven, you know. Unfortunately, assume the employee violates the this rule for the seventh time. Okay, then sorry for the employee. We have to give dismission. 
not sorry for the employee really sorry for the organize we have to we have to stop sorry for the organizing that's why we have to give this panel this mission that's the most serious panel from the list of panel is available you know for a for a, for a disciplinary violation Now, this is an example of a typical progressive discipline system so if we follow this type of thing then employee will have a chance of improving the manager also will have a chance of studying the reasons for the absence of the employee hopefully the manager will be able to get some fair remedies to stop the absence or minimize the absence of the employee then the second strategy for managing absenteeism non practice of expose facto leave approval so it is essential to formulate and implement a rule stating that all leave with the exception of absence on grounds of sickness or accidents must be authorized by a relevant officer before taking that relevant officer has to be specified by the policy okay so that it is compulsory then to get the permission before becoming absent but of course there are uh, you know there are two there are uh, exceptions you know exceptions one is absence on grounds of sickness will normally you don't you don't expect to be sick no normally normally you don't expect to be sick sickness you know comes without invitation also accidents you know accidents come without invitation so therefore accept accidents accept uh, sickness right for all other reasons if you become absent according to this you have to get the permission before becoming absent by right. then counseling of course counseling is useful for you know uh, employees who have personal problems due to personal problems you know some employees you know become upset then it was you know found that counseling is a good strategy for such employees then control of overtime because overtime begets begets absenteeism which begets overtime so therefore you know we have to limit overtime unnecessarily we should not use people for doing overtime the attendance remote system of course this is there is a strong relationship between attendance remote system and attendance because the people who need money they definitely come i mean most likely they come to work because of attendance remote system under this you know we can give an attendance bonus also we can give you know purchasing of leave alternative call leave reimbursement at a higher rate of pay maybe uh multiplied by okay 1 and 1/2 150 i mean uh, yes if the rate is 100 daily rate then we can pay 150 or 200 or even 250 if affordable then good attendant prices you know books gift vouchers etc non financial of course they are also financial no right anyway thank you card uh, this is non financial one this one good example for non financial reward select and recognize the best employee the best employee in terms of attendance the best department or unit in terms of attendance management those things we can do but anyway there are criticisms for attendance rewards there are criticisms for attendance rewards three such criticisms i have mentioned here so the first one employees are to come to work owing to their employment contract and they are paid with salaries and wages you know they, they you know because they are obligatory to come to work because they are doing the job they are responsible for coming to work and do the job then why should we pay you know additionally 
Uh, that's one criticism. If we pay them, you know, <clears throat> then paid twice, you know. Being paid twice happens. That is unnecessary, according to this criticism. The second criticism, some managers may think that they're not supposed to attempt, attempt, you know, try, try, attempt on managing attendance of their subordinates because attendance rewards do that. So also they may feel that they can relinquish or abandon the responsibility of managing attend attendance. So they, they can, you know, they, they, they can engage in something else rather than managing attendance because they assume that there is an attendance system that does that one. Therefore, they, they think that they can get freed from this responsibility. What is this responsibility? The responsibility of managing attendance of the subordinates. But the managers, you know, uh, managers' engagement in managing attendance also is needed, is essential if we genuinely want to minimize uh, absenteeism. The third criticism. Some employees or managers may perceive that attendance rewards penalize those employees who become genuinely ill. This is another criticism. Anyway, there are counter arguments, you know. Even though there are three criticisms, so I can write, I can, we can give, you know, uh, counter arguments which negate the validity of such criticism. You know, regular comers, you know, so you say that, you know, forget about absentees, but what about regular attendees? Regular attendees. There are regular attendees, they of course give higher contribution to the production, productivity, to the effectiveness of the organization. So because of that higher contribution, you know, we have to, we have to, uh, indeed, we have to give and an, an incentive, attendant incentive. That higher contribution, we have to compensate. Okay, then another one is, these regular attendees, you know, they come to work regularly by sacrifice, more of their time. You know, that can be utilized for their personal affairs compared with those, you know, who are acute, habitual, or sick absentees. Uh, this additional sacrifice needs to be appreciated financially and also non-financially needs to be compensated also also you know managers are supposed to carry out to assist other strategies implemented by the organization for attendance management such as you know counseling perform an evaluation providing data for research purpose and supervising Therefore, relinqu relinquishing, you know, getting freed from responsibility of attendance management, we should not expect. Managers should engage in that. Okay. Then uh, strategy number six, that is performance at present. You know, we can develop targets relating to attendance. Then we can measure employees' performance on the achievement of such target, then definitely that will reduce absentees. Then proper employee selection. Uh, this is a proactive measure for absence control because it will prevent coming bad employees in terms of attendance. It will prevent selecting employees who have more pro you know, propensity to be sick who are more prone to sicknesses. Conducting medical examination becomes essential in this regard, yes. Employees who are small entrepreneurs, you know, there are some employees you know, who are small entrepreneurs. They can be rejected at selection if they become serious at selection. Because, you know, if we hire them, they will do our job our means the, our company job while engaging in those small businesses. Then it is more likely that these people become 
absent. Therefore, we have to stop entering such people. Right. Then uh, number eight, the strategy for managing absenteeism. Work family balance initiatives. Because you know there are uh, personal, there may be personal problems for employees, which will you know prevent them from attending to work. Uh, you know, so because they, they, they want you know to have a balance between work life and family life. But if the company gives you know these things like flex time, compressed work week, what is compressed work week? I discussed you know when I was teaching job design, or maybe Professor Arun Santa, you know, under general HR, flex time you know you can you know, assume the regular starting time of your work is eight o'clock. You can be late you know maybe you can start at eight thirty, or you can start at nine. Can start at 9:30. Right at that, you you know you 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 work. Uh, you complete the work given. You complete the number of eight hours. Then compress work week. You know, so assume generally you know. So we have uh, per week you know we have five uh, service, seven sorry per week there are seven days out of seven days five days are working days. Maybe in some cases, you know, Saturday, half Saturday. I assume, you know, five days are working days. And then instead of five days, you know, we can have three days for employees to come to work, to do work. And that is the meaning of compressed work week. Then telecommuting. What is telecommuting? You ask to be at home and then do the work for the organization. Now I am at home, you know. I'm engaging in telecommuting. Then part-time employment, on-site child care, elder care facility, concierge service, you know, like, you know, to pay various bills, you know, electricity, water, telephone, you know, so other, you know, various bills, you know, the employees will have to pay. And then there is a special person, you know, employed by the organization who does you know these things on behalf of all the relevant employees and that's a special service given by an organization to have a you know to, to help people to help employees to have a balance between work life and family life then job sharing transport assistance uh, these are <clears throat> some initiatives which the organization can implement, of course, depending on the organization's financial affordability and other conditions like, you know, uh, perception of top managers, you know, the attitudes of superiors. Right. Okay, then uh, ongoing con contact during absence, uh, that is another strategy, you know. So according to research, International research studies maintaining contact during absence is considered by many organizations as a method of re reducing not really the absence, reducing the length of absence, demonstrating to the employees that the organization is interested in them and maintaining employee motivation. So assume you got absent, now you are at home. By being absent, you are at home, and I am your boss, you know. So I, I, I maintain a kind of contact, you know, during your absence. Assume you are going to be absent for three days. Because of a personal reason, assume uh, your wedding of your son or wedding of your daughter. Uh, then, you know, so why not, you know, I may contact you. And then that might reduce, instead of three days, uh, you may decide to come to work after taking two days on it. Two days on it. Uh, that's why this is considered as a method of reducing length of absence. Now, but anyway, this may be dangerous, you know, if we give a message like this, uh, you may think like that, you know, if I, if I contact, if I attempt to contact you, 
when you are when you are leave permitted leave then you might think that you know unnecessarily i am fingering into your personal thing i am trying to exploit you or uh, that you know feeling we have to stop we have to stop but that means you know what i suggest now in sri lanka maybe if the person is going to be absent for more than 3 days maybe this is good but anyway we have to do research studies to find out real impact of this one on managing absenteeism right then development of good health and life style of course you know because of this is really because sick absences inevitable no sick sickness absence sickness absences are inevitable because of bad health people tend to be that is natural due to various reasons so therefore you know it is a good strategy you know to develop good health and life is time and affordable organization can develop at least one program for that you no know, to 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 reduce or to stop life is time of employees which are harmful to their health of course according to research studies you know a clear link exists between smoking and absence the strong link exists between excessive alcohol use and absence behavior those who report better general health take more exercise that's another finding also another finding a clear link exists between sickness absence and excessive body weight on rolling you are you know body weight has an impact on absenteeism as the employer has a duty of care to protect its employees from health and safety hazards you know so normally in an organizations there are you know there are basically two environments one is socio psychological environment the other one is a uh, physical environment within the socio psychological environment mainly there are two health and safety hazards one is occupy you know occupational stress the other one is low quality of work life as far as the physical environment is concerned there are two major health and safety hazards one is occupational diseases the other one is occupational accidents therefore from occupational diseases occupational accidents occupational stress and low quality of work life employees are supposed to be protected by the employer that's why there is one function of a chair in call health and safety management employee health and safety management so therefore this is considered as a duty of care on the part of the employee then every employee should be provided with sufficient periods of rest and also a sufficient level of paid annual leave sufficient level of paid annual leave okay uh, maybe no maybe you are thinking now uh okay upar sir and you know some other academics because of corona you know now uh, we we are we are free to a greater extent but i must say that you know i must say that i am not free still i have a heavy work load you know even during corona time i had to do a lot of work relating to not my personal life relating to official life you know we are not free you know we are not free even there are now many administrative things you know professor evaluation then uh, interviews for professor appointments then uh, you know uh, interviews the selections of the students for various awards you know various awards so they they really take our time and effort 
even though our teaching actual online actual teaching has reduced now online teaching you know then we have to prepare not like you know normally i am a very good teacher you know you know that normally with a free hand perhaps even without minimum level of preparation now because of our experience you know we we go to the class and then we deliver lecture without uh, you know being that serious we were used to that you know we talk hours and hours you know without you know slides and other things we were used to that but anyway now we can't do that because of online teaching we have to prepare like this and then we have to video and then we have to upload then now now so many you know technical things i had to learn now i know how to you know upload you know i already developed what you call the uh, channel youtube channel you know we were very poor at those things but now because of in a way there are advantages increasing our uh, our, our, our what you call value but anyway lot of additional works you know but anyway with happiness we are doing uh because uh, we have to consider this time right so i don't know about you maybe you can share anyway this is online teaching uh, there are some limitations right you are also doing jobs <clears throat> not like me uh return to work uh interviews you know there's another uh, strategy return to work interviews return to work interview is a brief and informal discussion held usually by the relevant manager the relevant superior after you know after returning of the absentee to work so managers are recommended to do conducting return to work interviews because the simple but white act of talking to employees after an absence has shown to improve attendance without further action you know it's according to some research study not not done in sri lanka so therefore you know we have to do research in order to sure that you know these these international research happen in the same way uh within sri lanka also research studies are needed but anyway <clears throat> return to work interviews you know, that you know, normally we can we can expect this one even the right before that charter institute of personal and development uk you know professional institute for human resource management that reports that return to work interviews are regarded as the most effective way of managing short term absence short term absence because you know the manager needs to be sympathetic and should not show that he or she is rec, you know recriminatory or accusatory you know accusatory in conducting the interview you, know, you became absent and you took you know several days then i at that time i had to suffer a lot so likewise you know you could have not been absent so you know that type of thing you know we should not do under this so therefore instead you know we the interview allows to welcome the absent then check whether he or she is in a good condition to resume duties then to demonstrate manager's caring attitude and behavior then to make the absent and understand that he so absent has been noticed by the management and also to discuss process and take remedial actions if possible at an early stage you know so these are the advantages of doing that interview therefore that is that is considered that can be considered even though we we don't have sri lankan empirical evidence but that i assume this is good for managing employee absenteeism we can argue right proper absence notification that is another strategy you know it is good to have notification it is essential before taking you know leave absence also this uh, you know this 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 uh, you know this notification has to be through form or in person rather than you know through email or other electronic source why why the answer is here 
it is possible for the manager to know the reasons for absence and to make an alternative arrangement in case in case of an essential work you know assume suddenly you become absent then as the boss i will be in trouble as if there's a big work to be done and the relevant customer you know has been waiting serious for getting the work done and then if you inform me early then i can maybe i will be able to do a suitable replacement for that even your absence assume the reason for your absence is a very serious uh, reason and then i can inform to the customer unfortunately you know i have these people and then they got you know big you know became uh, problematic seriously and then can you please you know give additional time to finish the work uh, we can make such arrangements okay then 13th 13th strategy for managing absenteeism workplace financial education program workplace financial education program because indebtedness especially in sri lanka you know has been found as a factor that affects to increase absenteeism you know people have financial problems then one thing is they you know that there is financial stress then they become sick and then they have to get you know uh, sick absence and also uh, maybe you know there are some you know there are there are people you know who who on loans i mean yes uh, inability to even you know find because of financial problems maybe okay because of financial problems you know assume employees take additional loans from uh, banks and then the, in order to pay the loan installments you know they have to increase their salary then they may do some odd jobs you know by being absent for the regular work so therefore it is important to give an education about personal financial management you know self financial management person many people are bad genuinely many people are bad you know in financial management that is an art you know there's a science so so that is an art we have you know that science we have to learn we have to teach okay i think uh, shall we take a break now you will take you know a uh, five minutes break sampak i all right we will take a break okay let us take a break yes
Okay, right. <clears throat> okay, then, uh, are you all right? Yes, sir. Right. Uh, <clears throat> next one is presentation. So normally, you know, presentation uh, is not a popular concept. Uh, it's relatively a new concept in HR. So even the almost all the textbooks, except one or two, they do they do not have a discussion, a description, explanation, a discussion of presentation. But for this only reason that presentation has become a subject of interest. Uh, so then according to John's, presentation refers to attending work while in. You know, attending work while in. So remember, this is not the, this is, uh, yes, presentism is not the opposite of absentee. So it is considered as the opposite of sickness absentee. Assume you are ill, because you are ill, you are supposed to be at home. You know, in order to get medical treatment, in order to get a rest, you are supposed to be at home. But irrespective of being at home, you know, you come to work. And then presentism happens. Then presentism happens. So then presentism is this, you know, when you are not supposed to come, you come to work. Absenteeism occurs, you know, you are supposed to come to work, but you don't come to work. And then absenteeism occurs. In presentism, you are not supposed to come to work because you are ill. You are supposed to be at home or at the relevant hospital if you are seriously ill. But you come, you know, while being sick. So therefore the presentism can be defined as attendance of an employee to work while he or she is ill physically or psychologically or in both ways. Right. So then the importance of presentism so in fact, the presentism is regarded, you know, as the latest attack on economic and human productivity. So that there are certain bad consequences, you know, which I have mentioned below. That is why presentism is considered as a serious organizational problem that, you know, the, the relevant managers have to handle. So one, you know, consequence one, which is bad. The employee who is sick is not capable of operating to his or her usual level of productivity because of sickness, you know, because of sickness. I also have experienced that. Irrespective of our illness, you know, there are certain days where we went to university and delivered lectures, but the right productivity did not happen. Because of experience, we could manage, but, you know, the right expected productivity did not occur. Then the coming, you know, of the sick employee to work may cause infecting other healthy employees. Now that is more serious. In case of Corona, you can understand the cost of infecting. Then their productivity also will get reduced or will get lost. The third bad consequence because of presenteeism, when the sick employee interacts directly with customers, clients, they may get infected and then preventing them from regular visiting to buy and consequently reducing selling income. Some customers who became sick might decide not to visit the business place again. Then losing, reducing customer loyalty, losing customer revisits. Then the you know, fourth bad you know, consequence of present reason. If the employee is psychologically ill, he or she might hurt internal and external customers and other employees psychologically, you know, peers, superiors, subordinates in case of a manager. There are some incidents happen in Sri Lanka, but, you know, depending on the time, yes. I don't think the time allows, but anyway, because we have to do some activities that have been scheduled to be done. Uh, the sick employee may make mistakes in performing duties then the sick employee may tend to be sicker due to working without the needed rest or recover, to recover. The employee may become exhausted and all then increase in medical expenditure and all. The sickness presence may lead to sickness absence. 
Okay, so there are several studies done internationally. So they remain postoperacentism are huge. Postoperacentism exceed the cost of absenteeism, you know. So that's why presenteeism is regarded as, you know, I mean, more serious than absenteeism. So even here, the, you know, one right, you know, I'm not going to explain everything. So the uh, American dollars, you know, 150 billion problem, you know, presenteeism. The nearly invisible drain on worker productivity. Right. Then the mistakes or intellectual accidents, especially in case of psychological, you know, illnesses made by employees who are mentally absent can be extremely costly. Presentism from mental ill health alone cost the UK economy, you know, UK economy, uh, sterling pound, 15.1 billion per annum, you know, can you imagine? While absenteeism cost only, uh, yes, <clears throat> the sterling pound, 8.4 billion. You see, you know, here the, the cost of presenteeism exists, the cost of absenteeism. Therefore, presenteeism needs to be managed. That's why I am teaching. That's why you are supposed to learn. The Sri Lankan situation is not that fortunate. Even many managers have not heard about this. Also, they don't care. So one research study based on our research study, unfortunately, Sri Lankan business and other communities have given the least attention for this phenomenon. That is presenteeism. Right, then what are the reasons for presenteeism? Causes. One thing is workload, you know. If your workload is high, you know, definitely you tend to come to work, you know, irrespective of your sickness. Then pressure from co-workers. If there are co-workers who are not supporting, who demand you to come by forgetting about your illness, and then you have to come to work, even though you are sick. The pressure from immediate superior, not from peers, but from your boss. If the boss, you know, is a person that, you know, who ignores your illness and then demands you to come to work, then of course, presentism will result. Then concerns for colleagues. Here not, here, here not pressure from colleagues, you know, peers. But you think, you know, uh, you know, tomorrow there will be a big work to be done by us. Uh, but uh, today you are, you are sick. You are sick today, so then you think if uh, you are going to be absent tomorrow, then your peers, you know, will be in trouble. You know, you, you have to do this, you have to do, do that and all these things. Then you decide to go to, you know, work on tomorrow, irrespective of your illness. Uh, concern for colleagues. Then job essentiality. Job essentiality, you know, that's the degree to which the job impacts lives of others. Assume there are many people or there are considerable number of people you know, waiting for you, waiting your presence. Even though then you are ill, you tend to go to them, go to work. Job is sincerely. But if it is very low, then there are no people you know, waiting for your work, waiting for getting the service from you. And then you are sick, then you tend to you know, be at home. You, you tend to take a rest instead of going to work while being ill. Then job exclusivity, that's the degree of difficulty of replacing the job for me. Assume, you know, I'm your boss, you're my employee, you're a very outstanding person, unmatched person, then it is difficult for me to replace you because there is uh, no substitute for you. Or in order to find out a substitute, for you, it takes a lot of time. And then, of course, you have job exclusivity. And then, when you get sick, you know, when you get sick, there is no threat of disciplinary action, which is hard. You know, you have the freedom, right? You are sick, and then you can take the leave. 
and you can be at home a job exclusively but if the job exclusively is very low then there's a threat of disciplinary action which is hard also there's a threat of replacing you in especially yes job security then yes you may be a temporary employee and then of course there is you know there is a higher tendency for you to come to work irrespective of your illness but if your job is permanent there is less tendency there are research studies you know which have found out that in case of permanent employees there is you know <clears throat> less tendency of presenteeism <coughs> Okay, all right. Then backup. Now, backup is uh, what is this? Backup. Backup means you know someone. There is someone to help. You know the person who is sick. Who is sick? When there is someone to perform the work which is to be performed by you, are then you know propensity to sickness absent. You know, a propensity to uh, sickness absent is high. But lack of backup, you know, that's that was the most common reason for presenteeism, according to research done by Cavalli et al. Lack of backup can alternatively be called lean staffing. Lean staffing. There are no people to support you. You know, in your case, I see. Then, according to studies, employees are inclined to attend the job while ill. when there is lean staff because you know that you know the work is getting increased you know piling up and this condition can stem either from lean staffing or high specialization you know so assume you are a very highly specialized person there's no any other person of that specialization and then that means there is no backup even though you are ill today you will have to or tomorrow also will be And then you will have to go, you know, while being sick. To what? The absence policy. That's another uh, determinant of presenteeism. Some elements of an absence policy, you know, which tend to increase presenteeism, include, you know, three elements. Yes, there is no paid sick leave. There's a threat of disciplinary action for taking leave. also that's a requirement of doctors not for sickness i if these conditions are there you know i mean these elements are there in the there means uh, in the in the absence policy of course you know uh, presenteeism you know tends to increase but if these things are not there that means there is a liberal sick pay system or sick pay plan uh, that will of course reduce presenteeism then can down sourcing or restructuring restructuring or down sourcing down sizing you know that means you know your 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 organization is going down reducing you know uh layers levers can be management levers some jobs you know uh become redundant then employees become redundant so then normally these things happen you know then the employees you know have fear of losing their jobs and uh, this fear you know will encourage employees to be present you know while being sick then uh, 11 number 11 bonuses incentives for attendance of course if there are bonuses incentives for attendance then more likely that the employees you know uh, attend irrespective of the illness because they want to get bonuses incentive then another unfortunate reason you know that will encourage presenteeism is loneliness so what is loneliness it is a human state you know in which a person does not have you know loved ones intimate people friends a lonely person you know tends to be you know, lonely employee tends to be present while ill one possible reason is that a lonely person who is sick 
does not have another person, you know, who can influence that lonely person to stay at home, you know, by showing love, by showing affection, until, you know, the recovery of the sickness. Another possible reason is that such an employee comes to work in order to get rid of the loneliness, rid of the loneliness, can't be at home. Nobody, there's no, no one with whom the person can enjoy. No one, you know, who can care you, who can care, you know, if you are suffering from loneliness. Then workaholic behavior, you know, a workaholic is a person, you know, who is fond of works, who cannot live without working, you know, who has, who has no other things usually. If there are other things, or only very few things, you know, for the, you know, as pursuits of happiness. The major path, the only pursuit of happiness is the work. You know, uh, that's the meaning of a work calling. Then this, you know, the work colleague, you know, uh, we call it for a work colleague, you know, there is no this thing. Thank goodness it is Friday syndrome. Thank goodness it is Friday, Friday syndrome. Can you understand this? You know, there are many people in this world, you know, uh, after Friday, you know, then the week ends. You know, so Saturday and Sunday will be holidays as you. Then when they come to for, for Friday, when you know Friday comes to them, then they, have, they 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 will have this fun. They will become you know happy. Oh, today is Friday. Then tomorrow and day after tomorrow, you know, I can enjoy. I can do my personal things. I am freed from this hard you know stressful work. Thanks, goodness, it's Friday. But this doesn't happen. This is not applicable to workaholic people. Vacations are a real drag for a workaholic person. Okay, so therefore workaholic uh, behavior increases presenteeism. Then number 14, increased job satisfaction. Of course, if the person is highly satisfied with the job, then the job is the, uh, job is the pursuit of satisfaction or a major pursuit of satisfaction. Then in order to get that satisfaction, the person, you know, tends to come to work while being sick, while being ill. Right. Number 14, organizational commitment, which is effective, you know. There's something called effective commitment, organizational commitment. What is effective organizational commitment, you know? The employee becomes, you know, attached with the mission of the organization with the vision of the organization, with the values of the organization. Yeah. Uh, then, you know, employee loves the, those things of the organization because, you know, uh, employee realizes that his so her personal values, you know, are seriously matched, significantly matched with the values of the organization. And then such people, you know, you know, such people who see a serious congruence, serious match, between their values and organization values, mission, mission, all this, uh, they, tend, they tend to come. They ignore their illness. They are so attached to job, the organization, that they can't while being sick. They don't care. You know, especially mild sicknesses, you know, they don't care. They come to work. Right. Okay, then, uh, <clears throat> intervening for managing interventions. Right. Or inter, yes, intervening, managing presentism through strategies, which can be called as interventions. So what are the interventions for managing presentism? Right. Uh, <clears throat> one is this, to create, and these things, you know, please, by reading, you can understand. But remember, you know, this, this one, you know, it will not be wise, may not be ridic may be ridiculed, foolish and not worthy of attempt if an organization takes action to reduce increased motivation and increase effectiveness, you know, because they are they are they are reasons, you know, for presentism. This one is a driver of presentation. This one is a driver of presentation. Even this one, you know, some companies, you know, they are greedy of earning money. Greedy of maximizing shareholders' wealth, they will, they, you know, they prefer to have people, you know, who are workaholics. They prefer, you know, 
so then you know increase job satisfaction so you know you know so in order to in order to reduce present decision you should try to take actions to reduce you know job satisfaction organizational commitment of course you will be a fool so therefore be careful you know be careful your actions you know may be ridiculed so therefore you know uh, at the expense of you know you see the in order to reduce presenteeism it is possible to stop attendance bonuses incentive but remember the cost is at the expense of minimizing absenteeism therefore there is this need there is a need for the development of organizational measures or strategies or interventions designed to manage absenteeism without creating presenteeism without creating presenteeism sometimes you know may be very difficult but you know i think did you understand so don't try to increase presenteeism while increasing absenteeism one way you know then company is winning the other way the company is losing therefore be careful right uh okay then some of the interventions or strategy uh to create an awareness of presenteeism and that's one thing you know for the, all the people you know it is important to give an awareness what is this presenteeism and the cost of presenteeism especially the you know the cost of it is a fact that the cost of presenteeism exceeds the cost of absenteeism so that all the relevant people should know this should un should understand it then they will understand the bad consequences of presenteeism that on serious understanding hopefully you know prevents employees you know from from uh, absentee from presenteeism from coming to work while you know being sick then the second intervention to develop a workplace policy on presenteeism so i am thinking really maybe my next uh, yes you know the as an assignment you know maybe uh, i i can give an option for your assignment you can develop a kind of you know a system a charm system because this is advanced hr uh, one option you can do activities uh, for a topic activities you know given by me in the not on a certain topic another option i can give you for your assignment develop a policy you know a charm policy for a certain issue of a charm or develop a charm scheme you know that will definitely improve your skills rather than knowledge knowledge is of course very important but skills are also very important when you actually work when you actually do things maybe you have a very good knowledge but if you cannot develop a policy for presenteeism or absenteeism or a scheme to reduce uh, presenteeism right next one to train all concerned and then another strategy to offer paid sick leave you know when people are sick you know no need to hesitate you paid sick leave then people become Uh, people uh, will decide to be at home until they recover especially in case of corona this is compulsory you know this is compulsory corona is the most dangerous disease i think so then to allow employees to uh, take sick leave sick leave we don't feel you know even uh, uh, you know at this time you know uh thanks to the relevant people you know we have control the corona situation corona pandemic but remember never forget that in the world you know while we are controlling while we are being able to control the entire world you know outside there are many countries you know where the situation is getting <clears throat> worse and worse some countries worst large number of you know deaths even you can't see those video scenes 
to allow employees to uh, take sick leave, then to make sure that right supervision occurs, you know, that means the supervisor should use a good example. Setter is pariabus. What do you mean by setter is pariabus? Very popular in economics when other things being remain constant. Employees working for a supervisor who treats them well, experience less stress and presumably less presentism than employees working for one who treats them poorly. Okay, then develop a culture of trust, you know, culture of trust. <clears throat> presentism will fade away as trust increases. Once trust is established, employees feel okay, you know, about staying home to take care of themselves. And also remember, you know, work is a thing you do. It is not a place you go, you know, according to Heine. You know, Brett Kaine, you know, who is senior vice president and general manager, online service division of this company, you know, so emphasizes to create a flexible environment. What he calls work shifting, where our focus is on resource, you know, on resource delivery, delivered rather than trade. You know, of, of course, trust, of course, is a trade, but uh, okay, rather than behaviors, you know. Resource, not just when and where employees are working. So that way an employee is not supposed to come every day to the working place, you know, because work is a thing he or she does, not a place he or she goes. By being at home, you can work. Even, you know, according to research studies, you know, the in organizations which practice telecommuting, you know, telecommuting, allowing employees to work at home. So indeed, you know, they found that, you know, according to some research studies, the number of hours worked by the employee at home exceeded the number of hours worked by that employee at, at work, at the organization, at the organization. So I assume in the organization, Normally, the employee spends eight hours to work. But at work, you know, at home, you know, work at home by the telecommunity, it was found that the employee worked more than eight hours. Because, you know, one thing is, you know, flexibility, you know, mental release. Because the person knows that while being at home, you know, he can do other affairs and other, you know, personal things and other things while attending while being informal, while being relaxed, you know. Even I am, you know, I am teaching, you know, in a relaxed way. Right? I mean, in case of my blessing, in case of my preparations, other things, you know, even your case, you know, no, no, not that serious, you know. We have to be serious when you go to work, actually. To the, to the place, you know. you know. If the work is a place there, you have to go there to do that work. But if the work is not a place, then, of course, you know, we can be at anywhere and do the work by using a computer, by using a cell phone. In case of, you know, sales employees, work may be, you know, the, the, the work can be done at any, at any place, at any place. So in case of professional scientists, you know, <clears throat> scientists, even professors like me, you know, work is a thing. What I do, not a place, what I go. Without going to university, you know, we can do a lot of work. Can you imagine, you know, my how, how many how many days I spend on writing such big books? You know, so many research papers, how many days? How many hours I spend? I type, you know, there's no there's no typing stuff, helping stuff. I type all these things. I edited all these things by using my English knowledge. It is not good, you know. Professionally, there must be someone to audit things because the person who wrote, you know, is hard for that person to find out mistakes because of mental fabrication, 
mental, you know, working. But anyway, we did all these things, you know. So then, but, you know, I was at home. It doesn't mean that, you know, I, I mean, I'm, I, I'm not supposed to go to university every day. Even, like, you know, professor evaluation, various evaluation, students evaluation. While being at home, we can do that. We are doing in the maybe some legal officers, some accountants, some scientists. This is possible. Of course, for some works, this is not possible, especially manufacturing things, you know, manufactured things, you know, highly. Uh, there are, you know, there, there are, I mean, the workplace which is based on uh, specialization. There are machines, you know, which uh, are required to operate. In corporations, there must be a certain number of people. Then they definitely have to go there because machines can't be, you know, installed at homes. And for such cases, of course, uh, the applicability of this is not right. Then to measure absenteeism. Measuring is indispensable for managing anything, you know, including presenteeism successful. So this is a good question, you know. Has it happened over the previous 12 months that, you know, you have gone to work despite feeling that you really should have taken sick leave because of your state of health? In simple, you know, okay, we can say, you know, during the past, you know, okay, during the past 12 years, did you go to work, you know, while you were being, you know, sick or while you were sick, simply? Did you go to work during the last year? If the answer is yes, then how many days? The increase in number of days, you know, will of course show, indicate increased amount of presenteeism. Then another popular, you know, measurement, I, you know, the Stanford presenteeism scale. If the time permits, you know, I will deal with this, you know, that has been given as an exercise, as an activity, right? Then to formulate and implement a well-being strategy, that is another strategy. Simple well-being programs, you know, in the workplace, you know, addressing physical and mental health, we can formulate and implement. Then the HR, you know, departments, HR managers, course can do that so like you know in a program like you know the strategy should encourage a healthy life style which suggests that employees you know have a balanced diet or nutritious as foods even these are equally useful for you also cut back on fats foods with high cholesterol levels and salt and try to be neither overweight nor underweight do not smoke or drink alcohol to access. So my suggestion is do not smoke at all. If I can do, why can't you? Then learn to handle uh, stress, then exercise uh, regularly and have a regular medical checkup. Okay, then to perform Ramsey's eight practical actions, you know. So I wrote this one, you know, when I was uh, writing this book, you know, Sustainable HRA. Now I can realize that, you know, these things, you know, are especially useful for this Corona time. The strategies. Ramsey, you know, in 19, in 2006, you know, mentioned, stress these things. Educate. That means have, you know, some, some have used flow charts to show the spread of infection through a workplace. Then modeling. Supervisor should use his or her own sick leave when needed. And send them home, you know. People soon get the message. Then the hand wash, you know, washing habit. Then, cow, you know, cover the cough campaign. Then disinfect the cough campaign or corona campaign, or, you know, depending on AIDS campaign, right. Then disinfect the workplace. Use antibacterial shops and wipes, you know and clean fonts, 
keyboards and door handles and encourage flu shot you know, injections or vaccination if there is then shut down you know in a very serious situation we have to shut down okay then uh, right now the time is 11:04 so let me finish this so so the a broad concept of presentation so normally most of you know most of authors you know who dealt with presentation presentation management you know uh, followed the earlier definition that i consider as a narrow definition now according to our research you know uh, according to literature available in respect of presentation it has been defined by majority of researchers as that employees work while they are sick and few scholars define it as working of employees more than the time assigned on a particular job also in a recent research paper it has been defined as not fully engaged at work so therefore you know we have expanded the meaning of the presentation and then the broad definition of presentation is this employees have been recorded as present at work but they are not genuinely at the due work uh, this is the expanded you know uh, definition of presentation employees came to work they have signed that they came to work and they are doing well but genuine observation reveals that they are not engaging in the due work you know many examples or considerable number of examples you know can be seen can be observed uh, this is also presentation this is also presentation in addition to you know coming to work while being sick here coming to work but the person is not sick but the person doesn't engage you know in the due work the person engages in in something else which is not due which is not expected by the employer that means you know the person engages in something that is personal to that person okay this is also presentation so look at this example i am not going to show all these example because this is online an actual sri lankan observation an employee in the middle management you know working in a financial institution he is engaged in his private work while he is in on duty he is also a part time lecturer in a private academy and he prepares all his lecture notes and tutorials at the office during office hours all his teaching materials are prepared at the office by using office accessories and resources including staff he engages in private assignments including lecturing while he is on duty he anyway manages his superiors without any disruption on his personal engagement by asserting his ability in handling any critical task he is smart a good orator and a presenter and highly networked thus no one could find out that he is idle although he is physically present at work he is engaged in some other works without engaging in the work assigned as a result the estimated costs including direct indirect and the cost of misused resources would be more than 5 million <clears throat> are you all right are you with me hello yes. Yes, okay then you know imagine you know if there are situations like this you know what will happen to our productivity what will happen to our success and progress of success people personally you know get progressed while you know i mean at the expense of no progress of the organization so i don't like to mention about these things because of uh, online teaching right in this regard a key solution is the example given by the immediate supervisor you know immediate supervisor you know immediate supervisor should give an excellent example engaging in the work 
you know the immediate supplies to give an example of that you know not engaging in his personal work or her personal work you know uh, her personal work while at work you should engage is you know uh, engage in work not personal work right okay then uh, this is the end of the you know theoretical theoretical things all right then uh, activity 1 i think you know the, the activity 1 you know research studies you know you can see you know some findings of research studies done many years ago but anyway you know so then uh, you you know by reading you can understand so i will save time okay then activity 2 you can see a birthday you know okay read that one the birthday within a very short time we will do that you can read it company is a you know large manufacturing firm in sri lanka the birdie what is his job first class machine operator he has you know having three school going children also he has uh, he had no support from the extended family extended family no support then he was living in a house made of timber a temporary construction on a leased out land then he was by nature Uh, you know, uh, fatalistic. What is fa oh, fatalistic? Fatalistic. You know, fatalistic means you know, this person believes you know, in that you know, the human beings you know cannot influence, you know, uh, uh, cannot influence, cannot control events. That means he is believe in that he cannot control events. So uh, if you take that you know, OB concept, locus of control. Uh, this is external locus of control you know external locus of control the things happen in the life you know you know do 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 happens because of luck because of invisible hand because of the god or because of some other things other persons external locus of control you know uh, fatalistic then he was a great believer in black magic you know in singhala we call punya punya karma black magic his expenses were high as all children were attending free living schools you know free living schools we have many state organizations state schools you know education is free considerably consider considerably but this man decided to send his uh, three children to private schools we charge then to help uh, inflate family coffers you know what is coffers coffer coffers means you know essential money to spend you know essential things at home funds you know so that way in a small in a even in a small way is why tailored you know for people in the neighborhood but her charges were low owing to the external environment where tailoring was competitive this was made possible by buying a showing machine through bertie's workplace you know under higher purchase scheme so that means bertie's workplace is good in that you know in the sense that uh bertie you know got a machine showing machine on a on a on a, a higher purchase scheme that's why the wife you know uh could could help him by earning some money Bertie's wife was a quiet short and young about 24 years you know Bertie is a well mannered nice person and soft spoken too drinks of occasional that's another thing you know bad habit bad life is start occasionally might be okay but anyway deteriorating health the all the managers also spending money you know taking money hard earned money all the managers he has passed through you know unanimously praise him for his knowledge skills performance and behavior however 
he has become a bad absentee worker in the organization. Bad absentee. Then he blamed everybody other than himself and his wife. He believes that his relatives had done him back by him because of his marriage of his choice. That means including his parents, you know. In addition, the owner of the land too wanted him to vacate the house he was living in on the instigation, you know, provocation of his parents. He was having a recurring severe headache while his wife was suffering from an acute headache and was beginning to get fainting fits. You see, situation is pathetic. <clears throat> so before becoming worse or worse, it is the responsibility of the human resource manager, is that it? Or it is the responsibility of management of the organization in general to manage this situation and prevent you know, possible bad repercussions. Avoid. So do you think that a worker like Bertie can be changed positively? Yes, of course. If yes, then why? Bertie is a, you know, Bertie is an excellent person. Well, I don't, uh, there's no information about performance. First class machine operator, you know, senior operator. By using this person, we can train, you know, junior people. Also senior operator, normally we can expect, you know, higher productivity. Provided that, you know, the relevant motivation is there. The relevant opportunity is there. So we have to help, you know, Bertie. The HRM is there to help Bertie. The human resource manager is supposed to help Bertie or the relevant manager. What is your course of actions for Bertie? What is your course of action for Bertie, you know? So like uh, any, 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 any comments? Any answers? Maybe because of time limitation, okay, one can raise the voice. Any female, I would like to hear the voice. Just to feel that you are listening to me, you are with me. Yes. You can unmute, you know. Sir, counseling. Okay, counseling is one solution, right. Long term solution counts uh, long term, okay, short term, right? Counseling. Well, we can ask, you know, we can, we can invite the person for a special counseling and then we can try to understand why, 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 why. Yes. By showing sympathy, also empathy, and also by, you know, by, by, by making him feel that he is important to the organization. Also, by making him uh, feel that the manager, his boss, is caring. The company management is ready to listen to him and then ready to help him. Right. Okay, then you can unmute. Right. <clears throat> so then, uh, sorry, you can mute. Uh, okay, then uh, counseling. Right. One thing is good, good strategy, you know. Why not, you know, there are good, you know, government schools, you know, where there are very good teachers, highly qualified teachers. Why not, you know, the suggestions to this person, you know, uh, to send uh, his children to a government school. That will reduce, you know, seriously the money needed by him to maintain his family affairs. Understand everything for the time being, you know. 
you know, considering his uh, income, by considering his in income, and also drinking, you know, also believing in black magic, all this. Right. Okay, then. Uh, <clears throat> Another another thing, you know, we can even we can can we can we invite, you know, this, this was an actual situation, you know, this was an actual <clears throat> case. Uh, so then, in that actual case, you know, the relevant human resource manager and the relevant superior, you know, invited uh, Bertie's wife also. Then you know, gave a counsel counseling to her. Then by using, you know, so normally the wife influence, you know, is important to change a husband. Okay, then, uh, right, activity uh, three is about presentation, developing a figure, you know, developing a figure. <clears throat> right, activity four. Okay, you can go to, you know, activity, right, you can go to activity five. Okay, following the standard presentism scale, you know, developed by the standard university school of medicine, along with, you know, Merck, uh, yes, Merck and company, right? <clears throat> okay, this is a copyright uh, thing. Uh, it's therefore used for learning purpose. I'm using this only for teaching purpose. Right, directions, you know, so you can see the uh, the scaling, you know, please use the following scale. Strongly agree, like, you know. So this is star mark, you know. The, not that the words, you know, black, uh, you know, back pain, back, back pain, sorry. Cardiovascular problem, illness, stomach, stomach uh, problem, or other similar descriptors, you know, can be substituted for the words health problem in any of these items. So despite having my health problem, I felt energetic enough to complete all my work. Strongly agree means, you know, strongly agree means what? Increasing presentism. Sorry, strongly disagree means reducing presentism. Strongly agree means here the increasing the presentism. Then at work, I was able to focus on achieving my goals despite my health. Strongly disagree. Reducing presentation. You know, reducing presentation. Then here the increasing presentation. Then I felt, you know, hopeless about finishing certain work tasks due to my work. Hopeless about finishing certain work tasks due to my health problems. Strongly agree. Reducing presentation. Strongly disagree. Increasing presentation. Then my health problem, you know, distracted me from taking pleasure in my work. Distract, you know, distracted me from taking pleasure in my work. So that means it indicates that the person couldn't go to work. Then I strongly disagree. That means went, you know, distracted. Went to work. The problem was not a problem. To get the pleasure in the work. Then the AD increase, strongly disagree means increasing presentation. Strongly agree means uh, reduce, <clears throat> reducing presentation. 
And despite, despite having my health problem, I was able to finish hard tasks in my work, strongly disagree, reducing presentation. Strongly agree, increasing presentation. Then because of my health problem, the stresses of my job were much harder to handle. Much harder to handle. Strongly disagree, reducing presentation or reduce presentation. Increase presentation here, strongly agree. Okay, I think the way I did, you can understand because we have done similar things, you know, in my, um, many times, you know, in yes, considerable times. Right. Okay, then. Uh, <clears throat> so what, you know, if you, you know, you have to get <clears throat> the, of course, you should not be a person of, you know, having a high tendency, you know, to come on the present season. Okay, uh, activity six. Premaratna was the chef of a medium-sized hotel, you know, called the Elegance, which has been growing in its business for the last five years. Several large organizations, including universities and professional organizations, are its corporate customers. So there was a large international conference, you know, large international conference. Joined, you know, organized, joined by a professional organization and a university in the last week, as you know. So then the university had held several academic and non-academic functions in the hotel and was satisfied with its services, including food and beverage. And since several weeks, Vimaratna had been suffering from several, you know, domestic problems. Several domestic problems relating to wife and, you know, uh, domestic problems. As, you know, they had been too personal, neither the hotel chief operation manager nor his immediate manager were informed, you know. So they were too personal. Too personal. So therefore, you know, uh, this uh, employee, you know, did not inform. The hotel chief operation manager also for a personal manager about his, you know, personal problems, which were too personal. Without being absent, he came to work and did all the relevant duties as usual. Under him, eight cooking assistants were. The international conference was over successfully in terms of academic matters, you know. In terms of academic matters, not really, you know, in terms of food, beverages, Beverage service, you know, has prepared some food items, you know, did not meet the customer's needs. And quality of food and beverage was a poor standard, making almost all the conference participants dissatisfied. The main two organizers, chairpersons of the conference, you know, took the key uh, resource personnel, you know, they may be even foreign personnel, then to a nearby hotel, and manage, manage to treat them to their satisfaction by bearing the cost of, on their own, you know, by bearing the cost of treating them on their own. The decision makers of the university and the professional organization were so unhappy about the service provided by the elegants that they stopped doing further business with the hotel. Huge cost, you know. He would lost, he would first uh, to the hotel. What was the main problem? What was the main cause of the problem? How to solve me the main problem and other relevant problems? Of course, you know, if you are intelligent, you can judge, right? Yes, you can tell the answer. What was the main problem? Absenteeism, you know, not absenteeism really. Presenteeism. The person came, you know, Person came while being sick, but here the sickness is not physical. Here the sickness is mental, because you know he had personal problems, two personal problems, 
it may be related to his wife. Okay, so therefore, <clears throat> I can remember, you know, one one actual event, you know, you know, several events I can remember, but we have no time. Also. So one event, you know, if I mention, you know, one person, you know, had a serious personal problem. His wife, you know, he came to know that his wife started another, you know, uh, uh, illegal relationship with, with another person. When another person who, who is a, uh, you know, top level manager in a private company. Then he was so upset that, you know, uh, but he was an, you know, he was an accounting related, uh, accounting related employee. He was a very good employee. So therefore, you know, depositing money, depositing money in the bank, you know, that uh, duty was, you know, assigned to that person because the owner of the business, you know, had a great trust, great, you know, great trust of this person. So then, uh, then there was a big amount to be, you know, deposited. <clears throat> uh, let us assume, you know, that was real estate, big amount. Then that person, you know, was so upset of his personal problem. But anyway, irrespective of his mental ill, mental ill, you know, mental uh, ill health, he came to work because there was a big, uh, you know, big amount of money to be deposited. You know, he, he, he didn't want to, you know, he didn't want, he didn't want to disappoint you know, his boss, his boss, who treated him well, who treated him well, who had been, you know, uh, treating him well. So therefore he came to work, but unfortunately, you know, unfortunately when entering uh, the account number of the boss on the bank slip, you know, uh, he, uh, he, 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 he made a wrong number. And then that big money, you know, big amount of money, you know, was deposited to another person's bank account. <coughs> but anyway, he was so experienced that he, re he, re he realized his serious mistake, then immediately he informed to the boss. Then, you know, immediately the boss, you know, uh, took the action uh, by informing to the relevant bank manager to stop uh, all the transactions of uh, his account and also then about this uh, wrong depositing. And then ultimately within a short time, the bank, bank manager was able to, you know, uh, make an arrangement so that the, 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 the right amount, you know, got deposited uh, in the, you know, to the right account. You know? But, you know, the, then, the, <coughs> then uh, this person was invited by the boss for a council. Then this person, accounting person, you know, revealed his personal problem. And then what did the boss do is, you know, he gave one week leave. He, 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 you know, he gave two or three days. And then he, he said, you know, if you want to have one week leave, that means he said, you know, you, you, you have been a very good employee. So I trust you still. You know, I have a greater trust compared with the trust that I have on other employees. You, you are the best in terms of my trust. So therefore, please solve your problem and then come to work. If you need any help, because this is too personal, I am not going to intervene. But if you need any help, even though this is a too personal problem, I will help you. Whatever, you know, the help that, you know, I can. So likewise, you know, that was the counseling. Then uh, later, you know, it, it was settled. And then that illegal, I came to know that the illegal relationship got stopped. And then they, you know, their uh, marriage life, you know, got renewed positively. Okay, then uh, you, you see, right. So because of then presentism, you know, he, this, this case, you know, this hotel case now. Pemarath, you know, was suffering from a mental problem, but anyway, irrespective of that mental problem, he came to work. Maybe I don't know the reasons. Maybe to get the maybe because of the serious, uh, seriousness, uh, seriousness, uh, seriousness of this uh, work, conference, and all these things, or maybe bonus, some other thing, some other reason, the influence of the boss, maybe. You know, that's why, you know, it is, you know, even, you know, 
it is good you know it is good even though if there are personal reasons two personal reasons also the company you know should develop a culture where you know these problems can be revealed by the employees to at least one particular person who has been professionally trained usually it is human resource manager in case of a very large organization maybe a, a, an assistant human resource manager or a human resource expert call uh, hr uh, hr relationist or hr counselor something like okay then activity 7 so you can see here the this activity 7 you know they are indeed you know bad examples of present reason they are indeed some bad examples of present reason uh which we got you know through our observations we are repeat here myself and another researcher okay uh, i think now uh, time is uh, 11:35 uh today uh, we thought yes uh, nearly 3 hours it is not good to teach for 3 hours you know we had only 5 minute break but anyway we could manage <clears throat> we could manage so i think uh, any any questions before i finish sampath are you all right yes i am all right any questions no sir okay then uh, wish you all the best see you in future okay thank you sir thank you sir